happened, but it was a community where if you were there, you were there because you had to be there because there was nowhere else to go. Like there was, once you drove into North Harbor, you had to drive back out again because you couldn't pass through. Right. So it was a, a small community, and, uh, you know, we were kind of sheltered, I guess, in many ways. But we had a house fire in 1980, and four of my brothers and my sister died in the fire, and I was burned, and I was in the hospital for several months and things like that. So um, I wrote the story about that event, uh, and it was I guess it was life-changing for me to be able to write the story. Wow, because it yeah. was a, a story of survival and and things like that. That is a lot to overcome. I mean, I can't even imagine uh, that sort of tragedy. I've known people who've lost um, people in house fires, and uh, and even just having a house fire, nobody. It's devastating. It is really, truly a life altering event, and uh, yes, pivotal yeah. and and formative in how you. Um, go on with your life. It, it's it's a different sort of path you walk after you've gone through something. Yes, that, and I uh, think the the story was was meant to be a story of how the community had survived. But when I started talking to people, I realized that nobody really had you know survived it. We had all moved on, but it was like it's a piece was chopped out of all of our lives, and it was just like a gaping hole that was there. And nobody wanted to talk about that hole, and you did everything that you could to to work around that hole, but you never talked about there was a hole. Right. And uh, so, so I went to burn camp when I was well, 27 years later after the fire, and I like I'm sure I had, if I was put into a hospital somewhere, they would have said that I had a, a like a breakdown because it was just a life altering, life changing. Uh, event then, and it made me realize that I had lived, but I hadn't survived. So, uh, and I guess that was what the story was about, like how you you change from being a big victim to being a survivor. Right. And and this, and to be fair, I mean, it's such a trauma that um, you can't see the impact from inside of it because you're traumatized, right? So right. Um, yeah. it's easy for someone who hasn't gone through it to say, you know, move on or uh, pick up the pieces or, you know. But when you're actually the traumatized person, you're not thinking in that paradigm at all. You're over here and everybody else is over there. And so you're, you're, you're living differently. And I think that's why people don't um, understand things like po uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and... Um, you know, some of the mental illnesses that follow traumatic events because they see it through the lens of an actual person not suffering from that. So it's, right, it's yes. difficult to step over that and say, okay, but what if I had that filter? What if I was looking through that after having that trauma? I, I always think about that when I think about uh, people who have been uh, abused and how they behave after and people kind of judge them. You know, well, they did this, they did that, but they're not... They're not functioning on the same, uh, and I don't want to say normal, uh, but they're not in the same place. And, no, uh, and and if you had to, like, if you had to say, well, thirty years from now, I will be blah blah blah. But if right. you look back thirty years, it was like yesterday. Right. Like to look back at something, uh, even the birth of a child, you, like you can't tell where the time has gone. But if you had to say to look forward to that. So right. people that have no reason to look back or, 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 you know, don't see the symbolism in looking back uh, don't get that. Right. They don't understand, you know, that that something is there and it doesn't leave you. Right. Well, it's, And it's, it changes you. It changes you. But somehow you've managed to uh, propel that into something positive. You've wrote, written the book, which I'm sure has been... Uh, cathartic for you, but also beneficial to people who read it and maybe uh, find a little piece of their own um, life in there because, you know, there are a lot of people who've had uh, maybe not the same sort of trauma and tragedy, but something... Um, well, like, like I can only speak for 
the messages that I have received, like I've received letters and, and messages and emails from people and people that I don't know who have told me that the book has changed their life, their yes. lives. You know, yes. they say that they were dealing with something for 20 years and when they read my book, they learned to let it go. Right. So, like, it was more, you know, it was beneficial for me, but I think a lot of people got something from that book. It was relatable, and, and, and that's what happens. You know, it doesn't have to be exact same circumstance, but the, the feelings and the actions and the, 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 the emotions that accompany it are the same. Trauma is trauma. Um, right, yes. And what, what is the name of that book, just so that whoever's listening knows what to look for? Well, it's called No Turning Back, Surviving the Linehan Family Tragedy. Okay. So that's something that uh, people can, uh, you know, you have it available online, you have it still around? Well, it, uh, it, you can order it from Chapters or Indigo or, or right. places like that or from Breakwater Books. Okay. It, it was published by Creative Book Publishing, and they were bought out by uh, Breakwater. So the, okay. the rights for that book is actually with Breakwater. All right, good. Okay, so that's your first book. Now, two novels. So, yes. uh, yeah, so that's a totally different type of writing. And I've written nonfiction and I've written fiction, even though I haven't done memoir. I have done lots of nonfiction because I wrote for newspapers. And um, so it's a completely different, and I, I try to explain that to people, it's a completely different kind of writing. Um, oh, absolutely, yes. It, and not everybody it, can transition. Not everybody can transition. Um, well, I'll ask you, what do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Um, I really, I, I don't actually, but I really like um, the novel because you can make things be whatever you want them to be. Right. You can. Uh, somebody told me one time that it's like you play God with well, characters, a, and and you do right. You really do. You create them out of, um, well, out of air, but also out of your own experiences and maybe people you've known, and you take a bit of that one and you. And you figure out, okay, I've got this, I, I got an idea for this character. Now, what's her motivation and what's her, and that's how I think. And, and you know, I don't even know the journey when the character comes. I, I start with the character. I don't know about you, but I, it's the character first. And, well, I start, I start with, like, I, what I did, I went and I looked, at, I went to the rooms and, like, researched online and, and different archives. And I knew a period of time that I wanted to have, the story in, so I picked some events from that time in Newfoundland, so that, and then I built the characters and the characters' journey around those events or those places or those people or those things. So okay. that's how I did it. Yeah. Yeah, I do it sort of the opposite. I had a a character in mind, um, based based upon. Um, Loosely based upon a, a, a person of his, not history, but, a, you know, someone I knew of. And uh, maybe several people. There's a lot of characteristics in there. And I just, okay, now I have my character. And then where's she going to live? And how, you know, what's the era? And I did it because I write historical fiction as well. Well, I don't write, I should say I write it. But my last book was <laughs> historical yes, fiction. Yes, yeah. And so, I, so that's interesting. So, because everybody's different in their process. And there's no better way. It's the way that works for you. At the end, you have uh, two novels. And yes. uh, now I have read your last novel, but I didn't read the previous one. But I can tell from reading the last one that they are connected. They are connected, but it's not uh, like it's not a sequel or anything right. like that. It's just that they are connected. And the reason why they are connected was because when people read Being Mary Rowe, they felt like they felt a loss that the story was over and they felt like they knew her and like they knew the characters and the, some people even said it was like their sister or their, you know, somebody belonged to them was in that book and, and they felt the loss at the end that it was over. So I said, okay, well, maybe I'll just give a little sneak peek of where they are or, you know, why they were right. or who they were and things like that. So that's why I re reintroduced them into The Promise. Yes. And, and so like, it was that location, too, right? Like, the, right. the location was the same. The period of time was the same. So chances of characters crossing each other's paths in a, you know, a small place in St. Mary's Bay it would have to have been the reality, exactly. right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, that's good, and it's a nice way of doing it. So it's not a, it's not a carry on of the story of Mary Rourke. Uh, just so that for everybody listening, it's not like Mary Rourke and then Mary Rourke, Mary Rowe, is it Rourke, right? Is it yeah, well, she was Mary Rourke, yeah, but they called her Mary Rowe. Right. And so so it's not like her story carrying on, but in the story of The Promise um, and the characters in there, she is woven in there as sort of a secondary, third, uh, minor character. Um, yeah, so you get enough of, you get enough of her in there that whatever questions you had ans- had left were left within the because people get attached to characters and then they want more of them like well what's what happened in the rest of their life like did ever yeah, the happy yeah. after the happy ever ha- after is very satisfying in a romance like in a traditional romance um because that's the expectation that they happily ever after that's it the end use your imagination or go on to another romance but in a book that is more historical fiction even if it has a romantic element you it's more about character and so people become very attached to that particular person they they become a person in their minds if you've done it well and then like you said they want to know well did she have kids did she move away did she stay did she and and of course i encountered that as well and and that's a that's a credit to your writing that people get attached to a character like that it really is um and so then we come to the promise which is a new release um yes it's brand bank of new (laughs) right march is yes yes and well, April, it, is, it was actually launched last week on the the seventh of April. Right, right. And so, but it has been in, it has been on the shelf since the twenty right. eighth of March, yes. I believe. Yes. Yes, and that's generally how it goes. So, I ought to clarify for the audience, the listening audience, when you re- the release is when the books become available on the shelf. But usually, within you know a week or so of that or two, there's an official launch, which is more of an event that you. Uh, would say the books are definitely out there in the world, but it's yeah, it's like a like birthday party or a christening of the of yes. the book, and and so it's more of a promotional event, and so the the release and the reason they do it that way, so for people who are not in the book industry or publishing, is that things can go wrong and there can be delays, and you don't want to have the launch and not have books, so That's they right. make sure the book is out, so they give it a bit of a window. Um, and have the release date, which is sort of a soft, whether well, on the shelves, if anybody wants to go buy them. But then a couple of weeks later, they have a big splashy sort of, here, everybody come, sign some books. It's it's a more, and then pr- that's when the promotion starts for um, your work. So just a little lesson for the people out there who are wondering what the difference between a release and a launch is. That's kind of how it goes. Yes, and yes. you had two events, am I right? Yes, I had a launch at Chapters. On uh, Wednesday, and then on Saturday or Sunday, sorry, I had a launch out in Colonnette in St. Mary's Bay, which is pretty close to where uh, I grew up. So I've actually had three launches in three different communities in St. Mary's Bay. Yes, and that's that's quite a nice thing to do because um, I had same thing. I did one locally, and I did one uh, there, and I probably could have done one on Change Islands, but the ferries were having issues. <laughs> <laughs> want to go down there and uh, take a Get spot stuck. from people. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, yeah. if you put your car on the ferry, that's a spot that somebody else can't use. And they had a little small ferry in place for a while while there was repairs. So I just sort of left that. But they can get the book. Uh, I will be doing something on Change Islands, I'm sure, because that's where my book's set. Um, yes, yeah. So, uh, so The Promise is out, and I have read it. So it's the only book of yours that I've read. I will go back and read the other one, of course. I just haven't read it, and I think I have it here in the house. I have so many books in weird places that I, I, I'm not sure, but I <laughs> really feel like I've picked it up at some point. And um, so The Promise is, well, the, t- the title does it, it gives it away in a sense. It really is about a promise, but um, it's historical fiction. The year is? Eight, late 1800s, 1894, 1890. Uh, you know, late 1800s. Right. And the, the character's name is Aerith. Is that how you say Aerith. it? Aerith, yes. Yes. And it's a very unusual name, E-R-I-T-H. Um, yes. And she is a young girl at the beginning of this book. Yes, yeah. She, she's leaving. 
she's leaving home for the first time. Right. And even though just, even though home is not a very nice place for her, like right. but it's all she knows. Right. And we try to talk about it without giving too much away. We want to say just enough to get people interested to buy the book.